All right. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Thanks for chatting with me today. Hey, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So would love to know, I know we last connected with you when you were in our class of marketing legends in 2018. What's been going on in your world since then? Yeah. So, you know, like a lot of people, the last uh, few months have been crazy and chaotic and fun. Um, but so the last two years, so, uh, you know, I've been spending my time doing a few different things. Um, you know, one, still doing a lot around predicting the turn uh, out there, spreading the word about where the world is headed from an innovation disruption standpoint uh, with keynotes, et cetera. Uh, have been spending a lot more time doing executive marketing coaching. So I've been working with high, uh, high growth companies to think about not just their marketing tactics, but their strategies and the marketing organizations that they need in order to bring that to life. And uh, then I've been rolling up my sleeves with a lot of my investments, um, you know, everything from the bars and restaurants and craft breweries uh, to even uh, purchasing a new uh, consumer packaged goods company last year that I've been serving as the exec chairman and CEO and helping relaunch that business. Congratulations. That's super exciting. Oh, thank you. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. What sort of, through all of that process, like what, what sort of things have you, have you learned through that new endeavor? You know, I think the, the one big thing I learned is, uh, you know, those of us that start in brand management uh, think we know the world of building a brand really well, um, but we've only scratched the surface. Uh, that when you're building a brand as an entrepreneur, there is a lot, a lot of blocking and tackling that you've just never been exposed to. Um, and, you know, what I mean from that is I've had to you know, do everything from looking at UPC codes and how do you get GS1 to issue you one. Uh, to think about the fulfillment and logistical side of things and how to get the products out there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a ton of fun to get that rounded experience that building a brand is a lot more than just uh, you know, the, the marketing side that we grow up with. It's about all of the elements and frankly, the fact that marketing becomes a touch point across all of those. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I've, I've been interested in just hearing your perspective, especially with everything going on right now. I know you've kind of had a really great perspective on both the startups, but then also large corporations. Just what are, what are you hearing and what are you seeing as it relates to what you think the future's going to hold, especially in response to, to this pandemic? Yes, yeah, so I think the future, um, you know, I tend to be on the optimist side of things. And, you know, I think the future is really bright in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, one, you know, something I've been using a lot lately, there was an episode of Planet Money uh, recently on NPR, and they had a story of a gentleman who's uh, running a franchise of Chinese restaurants. And at the very end of the episode, he said, you know, remember that nature has shown us the way, that when there are for forest fires, it's the big trees that get burned. Uh, but what that does is create the sunlight and the water for the, the seedlings to grow and for the new growth to begin in the forest. And I think we're looking at that same thing. Um, you know, as bad as the pandemic has been, it's going to create new opportunities. And when the dust settles, there's going to be an opportunity where we've now been exposed to new infrastructure, new roads, new ways of doing business. And that's going to create opportunities for new businesses to jump on it and to take advantage of that. Um, you know, I, I was reading a piece the other day that said, remember, there's tens of thousands of software engineers out there right now that are frustrated with the tools they're now living with every day. <laughs> they're going to create something better. Um, yeah. I've been yearning for someone to integrate uh, Spotify and Zoom. Yeah, like, I, I feel it. like it's one of those things where, you know, it's that weird dead space in a Zoom when you're waiting for a meeting to get started that normally you'd have music going. And I'm like, come on, someone's got to build that integration or some way to kind of have that sort of experience. So yeah, hopefully some software engineer out there is already kind of figuring that out. Exactly. <laughs> Specifically, really, I mean, I'm, I'm empathizing and thinking a lot about, um, you know, young marketers, young, young students right now that are kind of trying to figure out their path forward. I mean, what sort of opportunities do you see for, for them and other marketers that are kind of trying, looking at what's going on right now and figuring out, you know, what's my path forward? What should I be thinking about? Yeah, I think now, you know, more so than ever, it's about tangible skills. And where can you go and really dive into places that you can roll up your sleeves and learn these invaluable skills? Um, you know, I think the one thing that's being exposed, and it's exposed every time that there's a downturn or economic weakness, is 
if you're not a load bearing wall, uh, that's going to be a real problem from a career standpoint. And you know, you need to make yourself invaluable and you make yourself invaluable with those skills that are very tangible and justified for the business. Um, you know, being, you know, for instance, somebody working at a brand or even an agency working on behalf of a brand, if you're the one driving the demand generation engine and mm -hmm. knows exactly how to get somebody through that shopper funnel and into the basket and make the sale, you're going to be the one that survives uh, because the business needs you. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever I think you're looking at a career and an opportunity right now, be looking for those places that you can find those tangible skills and also be looking for places where you can really learn from amazing people. Um, that's always valuable, but it's even more so in times like these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think something that we've been reflecting on a lot from an AMA perspective and we just want to honor is uh, so many people are making pivots, especially as it relates to maybe skills they thought they should be building, like event planning, for example. And now they're like, you know, maybe I should shift and even change how I'm thinking. And so we're actually announcing a new awards category called the best, the best marketing pivot. So interested, you know, tell me a little bit more about your own path, your own career. What sort of pivots and shifts have you made throughout your career that you've learned a lot from and you've grown from? Yeah, so I think there's a there's a few things. So, you know, one of the concepts I've been working on, and eventually it's going to be the concept for my second book, is this uh, concept of continuous beta. And this idea that we always need to be constantly changing, evolving, and shifting. Um, and I think the problem that we often too run into is we think of pivots as being moments and times where we need to make a dramatic shift. Mm -hmm. And that's really tough to make a leap like that. What I think instead you need to be developing your career is how are you constantly uh, doing small little tests that are putting you uh, one degree to one degree to one degree into the right direction. And when you look back, you've made a large pivot over that time, but it's actually been one that you've been doing in parallel. Um, and so what I mean by that is I'll look at my own experience that, you know, when I was at Procter & Gamble back in the 2000s, you know, I was a brand marketer. That was the world I was in and I was doing digital and doing all of that. But one of the things I saw was that a lot of the digital world was being driven by venture capitalists and by startups. And I wanted to learn about that space. And it gave me the opportunity to do it while I was sitting at P&G by being the brand marketer, starting to interact with the Twitters and the Facebooks, et cetera. And that gave me an exposure to that world. And I mm -hmm. could learn, well, when they talk about carry, what is that? Like, oh, that's a venture capital term and here's what it means. And they talk about their seed round, like what is that? And you start getting that exposure uh, over the time and it's almost like a long interview. And that sets the stage then that you can move into that thing next. Um, you know, one of the, the premises is I think there's a real power in hobbies. And mm -hmm. the things you do on your nights and weekends are the thing that can lead to that eventual pivot that you might want to make. Um, you know, some of the best craft breweries in the world were started by the, you know, the folks that were home brewing on the weekends, and then they could go launch that thing. Um, so that's been a constant theme in my own life, is the stuff I was doing for fun on the side, that's what eventually led for me to make a shift into a new direction. But I wasn't just making a shift into a completely empty sky that I had no idea how it was going to go. I'd been experimenting and learning and trying along the way. And that's what gave me the foundation to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know something that you've been diving into for over a year now has been the specific medium of podcasting. So just interested, I mean, I think a lot of a lot more B2B marketers are jumping into that space. I think a lot of companies are showing that's a huge opportunity, a great medium, I think, especially as we're going more digital. Can you share a little bit of what, what you've learned and, and kind of where the opportunities are for, for podcasting in the future? Yeah. So I think a lot of it goes back to why I even started doing podcasting in the first place. Um, and, you know, a large reason was a lot of the work I'd been doing was around the written word. So, mm -hmm. you know, started blogging back in 2005, was doing guest columns, was doing a lot of stuff of that nature. And writing is still an amazing thing to be able to take your thoughts and put them on paper. But what I was finding was 
I was really kind of spinning my wheels on finding new stories to share and to kind of drive my own thinking that I was sharing things out, but I wasn't making myself better in the process and learning about new directions. And that gets completely uninteresting to me. Like mm -hmm. I want to be in that continuous beta myself. And so I started doing podcasting because it was a chance for me to sit down with some incredibly smart people and hear about their journey. And what I found was sitting down and having a conversation allowed me to have things come up that I probably couldn't have gotten if I was asking them to share, you know, answer some questions in writing or other things. It was that side comment that they made that was a thread that I could start pulling and learning from that mm -hmm. some of the most interesting conversations came from. Um, so that's kind of why I started doing it. But then what I learned, and it's why I've become so bullish on it as a B2B tool, was it would open up conversations and opportunities to talk to people that could have a business value. And if there was somebody that I wanted to build a relationship with, inviting them in for that conversation was something a lot of people were really willing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I think is interesting is, and it's particularly, and we'll see if the behavior changes now that we're all living on Google Hangouts and Zoom and everything <laughs> else. But people in general get really nervous being on camera for a discussion, but they're very open to being on audio for a conversation. And so I could sit and have that more real conversation with them by doing a podcast. It was really interesting. Um, it's one of the reasons also I've uh, gotten involved lately with a company out of Indi Indianapolis called Casted. Uh, and Casted is started by a lot of the former exact target uh, executives. And it's because they really believe that podcasting is going to be the next B2B marketing tool, just like blogging and email and other things were before that. Uh, and I can tell you just in my own life, like I've, I've probably had three business deals in the last three months come out of people that I had as podcast guests. That's great. I mean, that's awesome. I think there's something too about podcasting. I mean, I feel, I think I can't remember where, where I heard it, but, um, you're, when you're listening to someone, there's this increased level of empathy that you're building because it's you're kind of having to it's like something about their their voice in your head versus even seeing them and making your own judgments so yeah huge opportunities for both brands and just you know companies from a b2b sense yeah well that's a super powerful point because brands you you struggle at times as a brand how do you create authenticity and community and bring all of this into it and it's a way to do that and make somebody feel more connected to your business and mm -hmm. feel part of it, um, which is sometimes particularly tough to do in B2B, but podcasting allows you to do that because you're giving a glimpse into your industry and who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So last question I have for you, I'm just, I know last time you and I chatted, you mentioned that a lot of where you seek external inspiration and read is more like science fiction, kind of more out there stuff. Interested, what are, what are you reading and listening to right now? Yeah. So, uh, you know, for me, it's kind of a, a mixture at the moment, if you will. Um, so on one side, I'm continuing to read the, you know, the stuff that just gives me, frankly, a little bit of an escapism, especially mm -hmm. in today's world that we have going on. Um, so still write, reading some of the science fiction and other things. Uh, actually, what I'm reading right now, though, is the, the book No Filter, uh, which is the story of Instagram's founding. Cool. Uh, and it's actually the first time I've ever done a book club, uh, which is kind of interesting for me. Um, so I'm a member of a, a group uh, that's part of the website 2PM uh, that's called Polymathic. And we're actually doing a book club uh, to talk about No Filter and what is Instagram, not only just as a business that was started, but how has it changed the face of brand building and retail and everything else. And it's been really interesting experiencing a business book alongside some really well-respected business leaders and how they read between the lines and what they take away from it. Um, that's been pretty fascinating because I frankly never understood the concept of book clubs when you were <laughs> reading, like, you know, a classical book or something else. Uh, but in the context of the world of venture and tech and everything else, uh, it's a really fun way to do it. Cool. That sounds awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for hopping on and chatting. I appreciate it. Hey, it is always a pleasure and uh, take care. Awesome.